Hey, what's up family? My name is Julian, the creator and producer of Sneaker Hit Stories. The sneaker of the episode for our very first episode is the beautiful Air Jordan 13. Designed by Tinker Hetfield, as you know, and was released in 1997, this here silhouette is one of our favorites at the show. Now let's take some time out to admire the beautiful Air Jordan 13 Red Flints. All right, all right, let's get into Jack Swift's interview. Let's go. My given name is Logan Stukes, but most people know me as Jack Swift. Military brat, born out of the country. We moved around for a little while, and in 1995, we came here to stay. Proud Strangers Studios is, the best way I could describe it is like a love letter to the future while taking inventory of the past. We're like a multimedia art collective and what we do is we create stuff, whether it's clothing, food, uh, content, you know, uh, digital art, and anything else we can get our hands on. We're just too, art nerds that like to do stuff, so. The sneakers that made me fall in love with sneaker culture are the Stackhouse Ones. When I was younger, uh, we were, it was a lot of us. I, I don't wanna say I was very, very poor. Working class family, a lot of kids, you know, and I was the oldest. And then them damn stack houses came out. I, I, I had to be about nine or 10 and I couldn't get them and I wanted them and everybody had them. And then my dad tried to do the consolation thing. So he uh, went to um, Payless and got me a pair of attack forces. And, I, and they roasted me. <laughs> they tore my ass for days. They tore me up and, um, and I was like, when I get older, man, <laughs> I'm a, I'm gonna get them and get every sneaker I want. And now because of Nike sneakers, I still can't get every sneaker I want. <laughs> Jordan 3 Unites is what they call it, but I call them the red cements. My story about those fire reds was, I really didn't think I was gonna get them. Thought they was gonna be hyped. Nobody had said anything about them. Now, so they can't, so I'm thinking they gonna be sold out. I go in and I go into work late, go to the Foot Locker, they're there. I said, damn, you got the Chicago Jones too? Nah, they only gonna be released to Chicago. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna cop these. Almost didn't get them because I was like, because I was thinking, are they gonna think that like I switched this Nike Air because this is not an OG colorway. So I thought about it for like 20 minutes and I was like, man, let me get these sneakers. And left out dropped the whole box in a puddle of water. <laughs> Sneakers were still good though. I never told wifey that. She would've killed me if she found out I dropped $200 in a damn puddle that day. So that's why they did my prize possession. There's a story behind it. And it should be a story. I feel like there should be stories behind sneakers. My wish list top three would probably be, be the Black Cement. The Black Cement threes the fire red fours and the uh, Bel Air alternate fives. I started liking fives because of Will Smith. When those alternate fives came out, I was like, yo, those are really Will Sneaks. From the show, I was like, and I love Fresh Prince. It, I mean, honestly, every time I step out the house, I'm doing my best Fresh Prince impression. <laughs> What do I think about the resale culture? Not to double back to Proud Strangeland, but the main thing Proud Strangeland is about is about urban 
the love for the urban space and the urban person. We get a lot of flack, but we do everything for this country. And so if, if nothing else, Proud Strangeling is, 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 is a celebration of whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're red, yellow, purple, green, it's a celebration of the, the urban space and urban culture, whether it's hip hop, streetwear, sneaker culture. So when it comes to reselling, obviously it kind of, it's hard, it makes it not fun, you know what I mean? Especially for somebody like me, I'm not broke, but I ain't no goddamn millionaire. I can't spend, I got three kids. I can't spend $1,500 a pop on a pair of sneakers right now. Maybe in a few years, <laughs> if everybody <laughs> buys Proud Strangely. <laughs> but right now, no, I can't. So there's that. Also, what I'm concerned with is like with everything in this country, if you keep inflating the bubble, at some point it will pop. And then these things that we love so much that we put value on, we have to remember, there's no value to these things. But what we put value, the stories we tell, the stories the companies tell, the stories the players tell, or whoever's, you know, not even players no more because you got Yeezy and Travis Scott and everybody getting sneaker deals. Um, so there has to be maybe a regulatory system to it. That's really how I feel about it. Like pump your damn brakes and stop being so greedy because you're going to mess it up for everybody. And the guys coming behind you not going to be able to build an entire company off of reselling sneakers if you all keep being so greedy now. Let's think about the future. This can feed a lot of people, so why not? But for somebody that's... Tr trying to get back in, into it, trying to learn a more casual fan, that seems, that can be disheartening. And I want people to come into sneaker culture so it can grow, so we can have museums and shit like that. The resale market, and, and that's all I'm saying, you don't have to be that greedy. You don't have to be that greedy. But then again, when you got social media, you got everybody stunting, you have people that don't really have style. Like Ho said, you can pay for school, but you can't buy a class. You know what I mean? So you have people that don't really have style. They out here being swagless monkeys. You know what I mean? And, and so hype is kind of like all they have. Now, I'm not talking about true hype beast. Now that people are leaning into being hype beasts, even with that, there's, there's nuance and there's growth to it. You know what I mean? And, but with this thing, it's guys that's getting into sneakers, dudes off of Wall Street that's getting into sneakers. And that's the problem. And it's like, if you keep inflating this price, you're gonna hand it over to Wall Street like we handle, hand everything else over to Wall Street. And I don't want them to have my goddamn sneakers. I don't want them to tra be trading sneaker futures on the stock floor. They already trade in Nike futures. Why you gotta come down to the bottom and mess with us? So, yeah, man. Friends, family, urban kings and queens alike, what's happening? I'm Jack Swift from Proud Strangeland Studios and this was my sneaker story.